Hello, my name is Robbie Burns. I'm a freelance illustrator and muralist. Uh, I got my BFA in design arts with a concentration of sequential narrative in 2015. I do comics, uh, TTRPG game art, murals, album covers. Today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the illustration process. Uh, while on the left, I'm gonna do a demo of me executing this kind of fun cyberpunk EP set I actually use as an example to explain the illustration process in action. Uh, I think I just confused myself. Uh, basically, I'm gonna be doing a demo inside of a demo. Uh, I am gonna take you guys by the hand and walk you step by step through every single thing that I did in order to make this piece. Uh, so this video is going to be full of a lot of hot tips I've gathered over the years, a lot of useful information about composition and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, 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 let's begin. So basically, the illustration process uh, is kind of boiled down into three main uh, parts. And this illustration process is something that like basically every professional illustrator uses. Comic book artists use a certain form of this. And what it is, is step one is thumbnailing. Um, step two is reference. And step three is execution. Okay, and basically the idea is with thumbnailing, you are doing a lot of tiny, like, little uh, little iterations of uh, your idea. Maybe you're just drawing for fun, and you're just drawing, like, little tiny drawings, and you're just testing out different ideas, figuring out cool compositions. Um, maybe you're brainstorming and just trying to figure out, like, different ways to look at the thing you're drawing. Maybe you know what you want to draw already, and you're using thumbnailing as a way to like figure out different camera angles and lighting and stuff like that. And basically, uh, I've been recently just kind of been doodling on little um, pieces of uh, like playing card size uh, Bristol paper. And uh, the idea is I just kind of like noodle around and mess around really low sticks and just kind of having fun. And then if I get something that I like, then I can go ahead and turn it into an actual illustration. The idea behind this is that, oops, let me get that cord out of the way. The idea behind this is um, it's very, very low stakes, very low time investment. So you could spend, you know, five minutes and make like, you know, a three to five thumbnails or so and, um, and kind of go ahead and draw the ideas that might not work out very well. You, you maybe have an idea in your head and you actually draw it and it's like, oh, wait, that is actually probably not the best one. Um, and then you decide to go with one of the other ones. And that is just so much better than actually starting an illustration, uh, just trying to hit the ground running and uh, just go ahead and go for the final right off the bat because most of the time it's just not going to turn out very well because your first idea is really never your best. And so instead of spending like three hours on a drawing that you get to the end of it and you're like, wait a minute, this actually was not like a very good thing that I was doing. Uh, instead of doing that, you can just do that like in five different ways on a little tiny pieces of, of uh, playing card paper or, or just drawing like a bunch of little boxes in your sketchbook. And then very quickly you'll say, okay, oh, I like this idea a whole lot more, so I'm just gonna do this one. And so it is like the idea of drawing like 10 illustrations really, really quickly and then just choosing your favorite one. And so that's the first step. And um, I actually, for purposes of demonstration, I have a little uh, drawing that I did right here that I'm going to use as my thumbnail. Um, it's kind of like, I don't really super know what it is. I just kind of like the shapes a lot. I'm, I'm imagining it's kind of like this whole like sci-fi sort of area vibe. And this is like some sort of like hub, like a little shack or dome place. 
maybe it's like a resident that someone's living in. Um, uh, and then there's like wires and like big like ducts and pipes and stuff going everywhere. And I don't know, just kind of this chaotic <clears throat> sort of city scene that I got going on here. And um, uh, that is my reference, or that is my thumbnail, I mean. And so the next step is to do reference. And basically, thumbnailing is very fun because you can just draw out of your head all day and just kind of like mess around and play around. Uh, it's like a very inspirational phase. And then after that, uh, you got to try to find reference uh, that is going to help inform your, your final drawing. And so I went ahead and did some of that. Um, so I collected some like pictures off the internet. Um, I'm imagining in this, in this little thumbnail that there's going to be like a lot of like signs and stuff. And it's kind of this chaotic city thing. Um, these are stills of the walled city in Hong Kong, which I think is just a super visually fascinating place. And I just really like it. I like a lot of like grit and, um, kind of like sci-fi sort of cyberpunk feels. So I got these references for just like wires and ducks and that kind of thing. I thought that'd be pretty fun. And then, um, let's see. Oh yeah, I collected these for that, for this little like dome shape in here. And yeah. And so basically the idea is, uh, oh, so I got this, um, picture of, uh, I think it's Angkor Wat in uh, Cambodia, uh, and I really liked how the uh, tree just kind of uh, s is consuming this wall and sort of taking it over. So, although I might not literally be drawing trees in this picture right here, uh, I can use these visual elements and I can kind of transform anything that I want for my reference to be useful here. All I'm really doing is looking for like forms. Like I'm not literally going to be drawing necessarily this, but I'm using this to like get ideas and to help, um, you know, get, get my brain going. There's like really, really crazy stuff out there in the world. So don't think that something you come up with your imagination is going to be like any better, any crazier, more interesting or more imaginative than something that actually exists because there's just crazy stuff in this world that is visually fascinating and insane and way cooler than anything you could probably come up with. So using those, these real things as like inspiration, uh, is, is, uh, I think very important and pretty key and like almost all illustrators use references. So what a lot of illustrators will also do, like Norman Rockwell and the like, and uh, you know, the great, great illustrators uh, in the golden age of illustration, as well as a lot of modern illustrators too, will oftentimes like hire models and costumes and stuff. And uh, they'll set up lights and they'll just like go ahead and shoot their reference, um, which is definitely a great, very cool, like practical way to do it. A lot of people uh, hire models and stuff. And, uh, that's a good way of doing it. Um, obviously not all of us can like afford models and stuff. So, uh, we just gotta use what we got. Um, and so, yeah, so really there's kind of like the, this is like a very, very basic sort of rundown, um, of, of the process. Um, what a lot of people will do, which is what I'm going to do today. And, um, what I usually do uh, is play with this formula a little bit. So usually after this, um, uh, we'll have another phase that is a value study. So a value study is a very similar idea to thumbnailing. It's just you trying to figure out uh, where your lights and darks and everything is going to be uh, before actually moving on to the execution. Uh, so it kind of allows you an opportunity to play with some of this stuff. And usually we'll do this after reference because in reference you might get some reference uh, with cool lighting situations. I didn't really have that here with mine. Um, but, uh, uh, you can also use some of the actual things that are in the reference too to help you inform what your value state is going to look like. So, uh, I'm not actually going like, to execute the big final drawing of this, but I am going to do some value studies because that's something that does not really take very much time at all. All right, so to do my value studies, I'm going to do, I'm going to use a tracing paper, which is 
the Illustrator's tool of choice. It's kind of like the, uh, you can think of it as like OG Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you have all these layers and you can just draw on top of each other all the time. Um, but with uh, tracing paper, it's just like a physical version of that. And I really like doing it because there's no undo. You can't like zoom in and out all the time. Uh, it's just like, I don't know, it's pretty nice. So let me scoot that up a little bit. So I usually like to do this with a Sharpie um, just because they're everywhere and very cheap and very easy to use. Uh, but instead I just have this like little brush pen, which will also be fine. So I'm going to start by uh, figuring out where I want the darkest part of this image to be. Um, my, my blacks here. Uh, so while I'm doing this, I'm going to be thinking about things like um, shape hierarchy, uh, which is just basically um, the size of each of your shapes. It's basically, that's what I'm doing here is I'm put, putting down like flat shapes because I want it to look very good and clean and simple and straightforward. You don't want a bunch of tiny shapes everywhere. Usually you have a few uh, big shapes and then maybe a few more like medium sized shapes and then uh, several more um, Uh, smaller sized shapes. See what happens if I just block out this little corner. I, I am sort of thinking about um, light source, like I'm thinking the light source might come from this direction. I'm not super overly concerned about it to be honest. Um, because uh, at the end of the day, I, I'm going to want to light this thing to just serve my composition in the best way possible. And by composition, I mean things like shape hierarchy and and that sort of thing. You, the reason why you don't want a bunch of like tiny shapes and you want to be able to think about stuff like this is because you want to be able to effectively lead the viewer's eye throughout your image, and you can't do that if it looks like camouflage where it's just like a bunch of tiny shapes everywhere. The eye doesn't really know where to go and it kind of looks messy. It's just not a good scene. You don't want it to look messy. You want it to look tasty. Um, yes, I'm just gonna actually simplify this even more and just combine some of these shapes. The more you can simplify things, the better. The larger you can make just your shapes, usually the better. Um, so the same thing with thumbnailing, usually you would do this maybe like f three to five times and that way you would have a pretty good idea of what you want to do um, for the same reasons that I talked about why it's good to thumbnail. Um, okay, I might come back in with some with some more black, but I think for right now I'm pretty okay with this. And like I said, you really don't need like a fancy brush pen like this. Um, I like, um, I mean, this is a great drawing pen. This is very good for drawing because you can get all these like thin little, you know, marks. But that's not really what I'm looking for right now. I'm looking for something that can just block in large shapes. And usually the fatter a marker you have for something like that, the better. Okay. That... That could be good. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to. 
I have too many similar sized shapes, I think, actually. So I kind of want to make some of these shapes a little bigger. Um, I don't really like how that's going there. So I'm just going to kind of intensify it on the other side. There, this feels a little better. I'm actually going to combine those. Okay. So, I'm rel relatively dark with it. So, of course, in my image, those aren't literally going to be um, like areas with just solid black. In my final image, those are going to be um, areas that are going to be rendered using uh, black and dark gray. So you'll still be able to see the stuff that's going on, but they'll be organized in such a way where I'll be able to do all the cool detail I want and won't have it be like distracted by overall image. Um, which is, that is called value gathering, whenever you limit values in a certain area to like a certain range. So if we were talking percentages where 100% was black, I would keep everything that's black here in like the 70% to 100% black, black range. Um, and so now I'm going to go and I'm just going to use a pencil to kind of scribble out my dark gray areas. Now when I'm doing this, it is pretty dang important that I'm careful about my black shapes touching my white shapes uh, unless it is in my area of focus. Basically what I'm saying is the eye is always going to go to the area of focus. Uh, which is frequently the area of the most contrast. So anywhere where black shapes are touching white shapes, the eye is just going to be, be drawn to. So obviously this is my area of focus for the image, this little like hut thing that I got going on here. Um, so that's where I'm going to want to leave the eye. Uh, okay. Yeah, that could kind of work. So even in this area right here is not particularly in focus, even though there's white in here. And same with this area over here, because the fact is, well, I guess that's not great right there, how that black kind of touches that shape. Because of the fact that there's not, it's all just like illustrated in between like white and gray. So it's not going to be this big area of focus, as opposed to like where the black actually touches the white right there. Um... I'm going to cut back in with a little bit more black. Um, I don't love this value study. I don't hate it. But um, that's the reason why we do more of them, right? Uh, I'm getting pretty close to the end of time on my video. So I'm not going to do another one. However, whenever I was just like testing out this video, oh, this whole video process, I, I took a couple, I did a couple more um, value studies that I'll show you that I think are probably, some of these are a little better. Zoom out just a bit here. Uh, so here are a couple more value studies. here and this is actually probably enough to to choose from um, I actually I like that one quite a bit I like that one quite a bit I think um, to actually execute this thing I'm probably gonna go, go with that one uh, so let's just take this away 
Um, so basically, my next step is to, which I'm not going to do on the video because the execution of the thing obviously takes a fairly large amount of time. Um, uh, what I'm going to use this information and combine it with this information in order to come up with my final image. And, uh, you know, if I want to transfer it to, like, bigger paper, then I can, like, draw this in, like, quadrants like that. And just kind of use that as, like, a guide um, to do onto my uh, my larger paper. And this, I, I, I typically use ink. Um, I use other things, too. But uh, this kind of study is the exact same thing if you're like painting if you're just drawing with like pencil or whatever you're doing um uh this is a process that's gonna that's gonna work really well for you if you're painting if you are using color then maybe you want to do the exact same thing you want to still do this value study with the black green white um where uh you know everything gray represents uh 25 to like 75 percent uh value range so just like everything from light gray to dark gray uh, everything black is going to represent 75 to 100 percent so everything from dark gray to black and then you know this light area is going to be uh, <clears throat> everything from zero percent to 25 percent um, kind of represents that range so as long as you keep this range in checks in, in check then your image is going to like look real like clean and like good if I just stick to this and use some of this information and then I use, uh, you know, my reference uh, to help me uh, learn how to, you know, be able to, like, at, throw in some, like, detail and interesting stuff. Uh, then I'm almost certainly going to come out with a pretty good image. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to check out my work, you can uh, go to the website on the screen. Um, you can look at my Instagram or my Twitter. And uh, I love talking art. I love answering questions. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to uh, hit me up.